Next we have Dr. Himanti. She will be talking about OT layout, sterilization and staff training. Good morning everybody. So I'll go straight to my topic. It is about OT sterilization and layout. So just as Dr. Arora was speaking about the recent outbreak of uh, TAS, so AIOS always keeps on giving us guidelines on uh, whatever recent is happening and the guidelines actually keep on increasing or changing or evolving as newer science keeps adding and newer literature is published or newer evidence is published in the literature and we have to keep up to date with whatever is happening and whatever needs to be done for prevention of intraocular infection. So these are some of the recent guidelines which came up. Some are old and uh, some are the new ones. And this is the latest read. It is a very good read which came in IGO 2022 about a task force that was formed and they have given all the guidelines how to prevent intraocular infection and also cluster outbreaks. So first and foremost, why at all do we need a layout system? It is because we want most of the hospitals want an approval from uh, professional bodies like the NABH. It can help us to provide better service to the patients. It improves the quality and image of the hospital. On the long run, it also saves on maintenance cost, a HR cost, and of course, it will also safeguard us from medical negligence. So this needs to be dealt with under two headings. That is the infrastructural and engineering control, which actually starts prior to the construction of an OR, and the managerial control comes after the OR is constructed. So when you are planning an OT, the location of the OT should be it has a functional segregation from the OPD. Preferably, it should be at a top floor if your OPD is in a ground floor. And it should also have a segregation from the laboratory and from inpatient. Uh, it should be, of course, the materials should be long-lasting, easy to maintain, resistant to microorganism, and it should be in such a place where movement of patient will be limited. Only the patient who are going to the OR will go there and not all the other patients. And traditionally, the OT needs to be in four zones. Number one zone is the protective zone, which will have the changing room, your staff rooms, and the storage things needs to be there. Then clean zone is the intermediate zone between the protective zone and the aseptic zone. Aseptic zone is the sterile zone where the OT proper is where you operate. And the disposal zone is where you do the hazardous waste and reprocessing of all the equipments are done there. So this is how a protective zone looks like, the intermediate clean zone and the aseptic or sterile zone. Coming to ventilation, the AIOS has not given a straightway recommendation that we must have a HEPA filter because still now there is no consensus on the, having a HEPA filter. But this is for certain that we cannot and cannot have a fan. We cannot have a window AC. But we can have a split AC where the AC filters need to be cleaned weekly and the engineer should come and do the servicing once in a month. And air exchange should be done for those who can have the air handling unit. This is an added advantage. Coming to the water tank, already mentioned by my previous speaker that an IOT should have a separate water tank and it need not be the one that your indoor patients or your outdoor patients are using. It should have a preferably maybe a small one so that it can be cleaned monthly once and this the water also needs to be treated at the user end. When I say treated at the user end, I mean that our standard protocol is first washing with soap and then with 7% providon iodine cleansing solution. 
This will be followed by cleansing with AquaGuard water, treatment at user end, and finally with alcohol-based rub that is sterilium. So what are the minimum standards as recommended by NABH? It is size of the OT to 60 square feet, but AIOS has reduced this size. It can be 160 square feet, provided the number of persons inside the OR is limited to 4. Humidity needs to be maintained at 40 to 60, temperature 21 plus minus 3 degrees, air handling unit as I have already said, Positive pressure should be maintained if possible. Occupancy, I have already told, preferably keep it to 4 and below and lighting should be 1 kilowatt. Floor surfaces of the OT preferably should be tiles so that it is non-porous, seamless and it can be easily cleaned day after day. The OT walls and doors, doors should be self-sealing which should have a door closer so that your OT nurse don't have to keep it open and you can just push with your back and go in. And the walls should be dust proof, moisture proof, the lights should be good. And since we are dealing with all the costly machines, FECO, vitrectomy machines, so it should preferably have a separate power circuit with a USB backup. Modular OT for those who can afford it is great because this is engineered with guaranteed performance and it has a shorter erection time and vertical laminar flow is present. This is the fourth zone where we are doing the reprocessing. It has a wash basin, a discharge table where you are cleaning all your instruments. Coming to the sterilization of instrument, we still have to give the highest amount of importance to sterilization of instrument because the major source of infection are our instruments. So proper processing and reprocessing of these instruments cannot be overemphasized. So ideally you should have two set of OT nurses, one set who will be assisting you in your cases and the second set who will be doing the cleaning process because this has to start immediately, not after your whole OR is finished. It's not then that you go and tell your sisters to do the OT cleaning. Preferably it should have started immediately and what we do is we separate the sharp and blunt instrument and you will note in the this video here, these are uh, needle holders and corneal scissors which have a posterior lock. We open that lock so that you get access to this joint here and this joint should be cleaned with a soft bristle brush. And we come from an area where the humidity is very high so we always dry our instruments because any amount of moisture left usually gives rise to rusting and the life of your uh, instruments come down. After this cleaning, we do processing in ultrasonic cleaner. And then the instruments are double dipped in cetrimide and chlorhexidine solution and then again dipped in distilled water. Now these are some of the sharp instrument where you will note the tip is covered with a silicone sleeve and these are the instruments which are kept for drying and then we arrange them in sets of stainless steel like FACO sets or glaucoma sets. Now coming to processing of hollow instruments, by hollow instrument I mean the bimanual irrigation aspiration cannula. These sometimes have to be autoclaved in between cases because if you have a long list of cases and your IA cannulas are maybe three pairs or four pairs then you need to have them re-sterilized again. So this should be done by hollow, by syringe of 60 cc syringe and the flushing should be done by distilled water and not just any RL or tap water because it is recommended by the manufacturer of the machine that distilled water should be used for cleaning. So three times you do the cleaning first, the water cleaning with distilled water cleaning thrice and then air cleaning with thrice again and then this gets ready for autoclaving. Packaging of the instrument, packaging are different for steam autoclave and for ethylene oxide. 
we have ethylene oxide ETO in our hospital because we have uh, lots of tubings and lenses that needs to be cleaned. So for packaging, usually it is done like this in the left video and you will note that the autoclave tape has been put here and in the tape, the OT nurse needs to write down the date when this was packed and then it will go to the autoclaving and the color needs to change. This packing is done for ETO. You will note these are rolls. We can cut them customized according to our size of the instrument that we need to do ETO. And then we seal it. It is of course a two packet, a double packet needs to be done. And while we are taking it for the OT trolley, one packet will be opened and with the pack, second packet it comes to our trolley. So what are the sterilization method? Autoclaving, when we speak of autoclaving, horizontal autoclave is the preferred one where we can uh, sterilize linen and metallic instrument and it should be used within 48 hours. In between cases also autoclaving can be done but of course there is a plasma grade class B sterilizer or plasma sterilizer which can be used. Chemical sterilization is now not recommended by AIOS in all the recent guidelines and in the IGO article that published in 2022, it is not recommended. Coming to ETO sterilizer, how it is done. For ETO, the instrument that we use are the heat labile instrument like the tubings, phaco probes, cryo probes, and it takes a running time of six hours and after six hours, an aeration time of 72 hours must be kept and then it can be used and the sterility is maintained for one year. So these are some of the instruments that we sterilize with ETO. Coming to the indicators, some of the indicators has been covered by my previous speaker. So these are the physical indicators, the strip which we use in autoclave in the surgical instrument trays and the gas is the one which we use in the ETO. The stickers are kept on the roll, which are on the packing material with which we pack the instruments. This is the Bowedic test, which is also used for checking the sterility of hollow tubings. The biological ampoules should be used for once in three months to know about the efficiency of the autoclaves. Operating room cleaning has been covered somehow a little bit by my previous speaker. Uh, so one important thing that I want to highlight here is the floor, the microscope, surfaces, all horizontal surfaces and the sinks should be cleaned daily and it should be documented. Now with what you want us to clean it, we, for us we are using bacillosid, mopping with bacillosid is what we do. And for uh, fumigation is actually not so much preferred because formalin is a known carcinogenic, but it is not contraindicated by AIOC. It is still allowed. So fumigation can be done. Fogging is preferred, but not mandatory. So for a running OT, fumigation can be done once in a month. This is the three bucket technique that we use for cleaning the horizontal surfaces, the um, floors and the bed, surface of beds. For a startup OT, fumigation should be done on three consecutive days and then three negative cultures should be obtained. And for a running OT, periodic cultures once in three months should be taken. So from where do we take the sample? We should take the sample from the microscope, from the head end of the table and from air. And all these should be documented and you should maintain a file where we keep all the culture reports. So these are some of the newer sterilizer or surface disinfectant, bacillosid, bacillol, and one latest one which has come in this uh, 2022 article is Vircon, which is also a surface disinfectant and it is recommended. It is, it is recommended for floor, wall, microscopes and all horizontal surfaces. It has uh, virucidal, bactericidal and fungicidal advantage. So I will not go into the details of cleaning protocols. It is there in our handout, which you can uh, collect from me.
so something about the staff training we need to train our staffs over and over again maybe once in 3 months or once in 6 months about the ot sterilization by counseling seminars educational videos if necessary and also we need to periodically assess how well they are doing as dr mathur has mentioned about those checklist those should be maintained thank you very much for your patient hearing